and welcome to Your Vote Counts, a public service program bringing local candidate interviews to you for the primary 2020 election. This is produced by Capital Community Television via remote technology in collaboration with the community groups of the American Association of University Women, League of Women Voters, both Polk and Marion County, Salem City Club, and four neighborhood associations. For the nonpartisan contested races selected, all candidates were invited and all accepted. Candidates did not receive the questions. They were developed by the sponsoring groups and they didn't receive them ahead of time. The candidates were asked to prepare a three-minute opening statement telling about themselves, their qualifications, and possibly a vision for the elected position. Hello, I'm Jan Margosian from Salem City Club, and I'm here to introduce uh, Virginia Stapleton, candidate for Salem City Council position number one. Virginia, would you like to give your opening statement? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, I am uh, born and raised in Salem, Oregon here and uh, lived here my whole life and lived in Ward 1 for the past 13 years. Uh, my husband and I have two children and I am a full-time mother as well as a student at Chemeketa Community College. I'm pursuing my associate's degree there right now. And for the past uh, 12 or 13 years that we've lived here in Ward 1, my husband and I have just been committed to a life of service and uh, trying to create community within our neighborhoods. And uh, it's just been a really great time of reaching out and uh, being an active member of the community, working with the city to replace sidewalks in our neighborhood and get a flashing light beacon at the crosswalk at 19th and Market. Uh, so that our kids in Inglewood area could cross Market Street and get to school safely. Other things that I've been involved in uh, have been our Neighborhood Watch Program and the Inglewood Forest Festival. I've also been an active volunteer at Inglewood Elementary School and serve on the Salem-Kaiser School Board's Budget Committee for the past two years. And uh, there I've gotten a really good experience on dealing with a large budget and a, lower, a large uh, group uh, working together in, for the public good and uh, I'm ready to address the big issues facing our city and my ward right now, uh, such as homelessness, um, active transportation, so fixing those sidewalks and getting those crosswalks installed, uh, different uh, things like bike paths and uh, getting our transit system up and working well. And uh, now with this pandemic, just trying to help all those small business owners get back on their feet and uh, just real excited, real excited to be a part of this. And uh, just seems like the next, next step for me to step up and, and serve my city in this way. Thank you very much for that information. Now let's, let's give you an opportunity to address some of the questions that were very important uh, to the community. Uh, we'd like to hear you speak about uh, many residents do not understand why you should even worry about who's on your city council. Uh, why should residents uh, be interested in this race? Yeah, well, a lot of things are decided at City Hall. Uh, a lot of the direction of the city is uh, decided from your city councilor, and uh, it's important to pay attention to that. Um, I know some really big uh, things happening right now, like the homelessness. How do we want to handle that? Uh, and uh, we need to pay attention to what our candidates stand for and how they want to address those issues and if they align with what your personal views are on those issues. Uh, things like transportation and how we're going to invest in that and what are the priorities for that. Uh, those are important for our city councilors. Uh, and if you uh, have concerns like that, you need to research your city councilor and pick the one that aligns most with your views. Uh, also things like housing, how we want to go forward. Uh, the R Salem plan is gonna be uh, put in our laps uh, first thing in January next year. So that is another thing that we need to pay close attention to and um, align with the city councilor that you uh, have your beliefs uh, that align with those beliefs. So that's really important. Thank you. Uh, you've talked about the homeless. Um, what direction for the care taking into consideration business concerns and public 
Yeah, so um, you're breaking up a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and answer that for you. Um, my goals with the homeless situation that we have going on right now is that we need to focus our energy on getting a 24 hour low barrier shelter that's permanent. Uh, this issue is a long time in the making, uh, 30 plus years, and it's gonna take us a while to get out of it. So we need to find a permanent location for a low barrier shelter uh, that's gonna help us through this time. We also need to uh, get the state to help fund a navigation center and a sobering center. Uh, and those will just really uh, have a positive impact on the people who are uh, experiencing homelessness right now to be able to access the resources they need to get help. Um, other things that I would uh, advocate for would be um, a mobile unit like the CAHOOTS model that they have down in Eugene. I think that would be uh, very helpful and it's uh, shown to reduce the stress put on our uh, first responders. Um, other things uh, would be uh, the storage downtown or throughout the city so that people experiencing homelessness would have a place to store their belongings so that they could uh, go to appointments or go to their job uh, without the fear of losing their things. Um, also public bathrooms uh, downtown would be uh, critical for this as well as continuing to invest in our um, homeless uh, rental assistance program that I fully believe in that's doing good work and needs to continue. That's very specific. Thank you very much. <laughs> Climate change is another subject that the community is very interested in. Uh, do you think that Salem uh, needs a climate action plan? Yes, I do. And I have heard, um, you know, why, why do this at a city level when they're doing it at a state level? But I think it's important for the city of Salem to do this. We are uh, one of the only larger cities in the state that don't have one. And I think that it's about leadership. It's about uh, letting our communities know what the direction is. Uh, climate change is going to change. We're going to change climate change issues individually, but also uh, collectively as a unit. And that's going to take place in all levels of government. So for me, uh, doing that at the city level really um, points our communities in a good direction and gives leadership for this issue that's very important. And it also allows us to take steps to reduce our own emissions, uh, you know, here at the city level, whether it's with our parks and, and their um, equipment that they use to maintain or any other uh, thing that we can do to kind of help set the tone for our community, for our society, um, to get us going in the right direction on this. Thank you. Um, assuming that there may be cuts in revenue and increases in needs. Uh, please tell us your financial priorities for the city budget. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> and so um, and so multi-layered right now and so in the unknown because of this pandemic and what the cost is going to be for us as a city um, and, and for our residents. It's really, we're in the unknown right now. So I would love to come to you with a, a master plan that's going to solve all these problems, but I honestly, um, I'm really paying close attention to see uh, what's happening, uh, both individually and to our small businesses. Um, and, and those unemployment numbers are something that we have never seen before, and that's going to have a negative impact on all levels of government. Uh, so it, I really, I, um, I hate to put any kind of plan out there not knowing what we're going to be uh, faced with in the next couple of months. Thank you. Uh, one of the elements discussed in the updating of the Salem Comprehensive Plan uh, is what they call a complete neighborhood. Uh, can you explain or describe what that means? Yes. So for me, a complete neighborhood means that, uh, one, I just get so excited about things like this, uh, where uh, it's where everything that you need is within walking distance or very, very close to you. So your grocery stores, um, your service stations, uh, pharmacies, the things that you would need, um, even some retail um, are all very close to you so that you can either uh, walk there, bike there, or use transit to get there. So it's more of instead of having centralized things, uh, more spread out within the neighborhoods uh, so that people can have a smaller footprint. Uh, development and maintenance of infrastructure, such as streets, which you talked a little bit about, is very important to uh, the face of the community as well as its safety. Um, do you have a plan on how to attend to this? So, um, 
infrastructure is going to be major for anybody uh, here at the city. And, and this is one of our major uh, goals that we have at the city uh, to be able to deal with this infrastructure, whether it's going to be roads or it's going to be sidewalks, um, even bridges for us, right? In the city of Salem, having a river go through the middle of our town, bridges are an important aspect of that. So, um, Yes, it's very important for us uh, to focus that on that. And uh, it's one of the priorities of running a city is making sure the infrastructure is working well. Concerning traffic, uh, what are your ideas about congestion and the defeat of the Salem River Crossing proposal? Yes, so I was born and raised in West Salem. So I, I first out want to uh, I first want to say that I uh, completely understand the frustration of our Salem uh, residents that live on the west side of the river, and uh, I also live here in Ward One, and of course, and so uh, I have the negative impact of all of those cars um, going through our city uh, or waiting uh, and uh, all of that backed up traffic. So it has a negative impact on a lot of members of Ward One. Um, for me, though, the bridge option that was put forward, um, it really had a pretty negative effect on a lot of people in Ward 1. And uh, taking out over 100 homes and businesses and, uh, you know, going through uh, Wallace Marine Park and uh, kind of taking up a lot of Edgewater Street, uh, which was an area that I worked in my whole uh, teenage years was along Edgewater Street. So these are areas of town that I know and that I love and that... Um, I really want to see improved and uh, I would love to see a neighborhood bridge. I know that we need more bridges, um, but a neighborhood bridge in town, I think would be fabulous. As far as connecting our interstates, I would love to see uh, the state fund some bypasses to the north and to the south of the city. I think that would be really um, wonderful and critical to the movement of our people in our town. So. Um, what is, do you have a vision for the vitality of downtown Salem? Yes, so yes. Um, vitality is a beautiful word when it comes to a thriving city. And for me, uh, working on our neighborhoods and our communities uh, create a thriving city. And that in turn creates a, uh, a really thriving downtown center. So uh, for me, if we can invest in the livability for our citizens, we will bring in more people to live in our neighborhoods and our communities, and therefore they will then work in our neighborhoods and communities. That's the goal um, that I would like to see come true for our city. Um, bringing in small business owners, making it easier for them to run and function, um, and just really using the, the money that we have set aside uh, for downtown to work on revitalizing it, uh, continuing the work on all those old businesses, the, the old buildings that we have down there, just beautiful work that's happened so far um, that we need to continue. Uh, public art downtown has just been a blessing. It's been beautiful to see. Um, I would also love to see the riverfront park extended to the north and uh, see if we can't uh, revitalize Front Street and turn that into housing and businesses. Um, and that linear park running along the, the river there I think would be beautiful and uh, really uh, make our downtown thriving and, and beautiful to be in. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about agricultural lands. Uh, can they be protected while addressing the population growth? Yes. Um, I grew up in the country. My husband even grew out farther out in the country, uh, worked on a farm that was uh, over a thousand acres. So we know all about farmland. We know all about farmers and uh, protecting those vital resources that we have here, especially in the Willamette Valley. Uh, for me, I want to see more infill uh, in our growth as far as housing um, instead of going out to the farther edges. So uh, for me, it's about protecting those urban growth boundaries and infilling uh, with the development that we have uh, here in town uh, and making use of the land that we've already taken up uh, before we even start uh, edging towards those, those boundaries that are there. Thank you. Um, solid waste. It still looms large. Our community is very interested in your thoughts uh, 
your understanding of the issue and what you might suggest to solve it. So again, I have a, a background in uh, waste management. I worked for Valley Recycling in West Salem uh, for four years uh, when I was younger. So I have a real good understanding of uh, recycling programs and yard waste programs and also the solid waste that goes to either landfills or to the burner. So um, I feel uh, very grateful that I've had that experience when faced with the issues that we are facing now as a city. Um, for me, it's it's never great to um, you know see a burner uh, there on your highway and see all of those emissions going into the air, um, and it's also uh, not super great to see a landfill. So neither of these options are perfect, um, and I think our future um, holds both of them. Um, and the reason I say that is because that burner really uh, protects a lot of farmland that we have, um, and that's important as well. So it's about finding balance between the two, and it's about um, finding a, a path forward that uh, we can address the emission issue uh, from the burner and then also um, try to find new ways, uh, new technologies to help manage our solid waste. Thank you very much, Virginia. Uh, we have a little bit more time. I was wondering if there was anything uh, that you wanted to add that I had not uh, asked you. Well, um, I am not sure. There's so many uh, different things that I get excited about. I, I think that um, parks is one that we haven't talked about or libraries uh, that are important. Um, also, the fact that I am a full-time mom of two kids and uh, the R Salem plan that's going to be coming up, I would like my uh, my view or my experience in life as a full-time mom of two kids to be at the table. I think it's really important that my experience is there. Uh, as stay-at-home moms, we use the city very differently than uh, other people, and I want our voice there and heard. Um, I would love to see uh, more parks and uh, the development of park lands that we have set aside already. Um, I really feel like as we become more densely populated, our parks and green spaces need to uh, keep pace with that so that everybody has access to beautiful green space. Um, and then another thing, uh, libraries I touched on, uh, I think it's time that we have a uh, smaller branches on the outskirts of town, whether it's south, east, and north, I think it would just be fabulous to have smaller branches like they do in West Salem around the city so that everybody has access to that um, in their neighborhood. So those are a few things that I uh, get really excited about and uh, excited about uh, finding a way to find those, a way to get that uh, going for our city. I think it'd really be a good investment. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I appreciate the interview today. And I thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks to uh, Capital Community Television uh, for the extensive efforts that made uh, to make this program happen. And thanks to you, the public, for watching in order to become an informed voter. Uh, if you have recently moved or need to register to vote, you have until April 18th to do so. Uh, ballots will be mailed out beginning April 29th. Remember to vote because we all know your vote counts.